Habit Formation and Breaking Bad Habits We want to begin this video by letting you know this. Forming a habit is not an easy thing to do. There are a number of different factors which affect your ability to break a bad habit or form a new good one. Time and Patience To break a bad habit or create a new good habit requires time and patience. You may have read that there is a 21-day habit formation rule. Many self-help gurus swear by this and will tell you that this is the standard amount of time to break or form a habit. But the 21-day rule is only part of the equation. In general, it takes at least 21 days for people to feel comfortable about breaking a bad habit or forming a new one. This is the minimum time for individuals to become accustomed to the changes they have made in their life. For the breaking of a bad habit or formation of a new one, to stick, it will take longer. The psychologist will tell you that it takes an average of 66 days. When you think about it, this is not a great deal of time in the grand scheme of things, just over two months. But when you were just starting out, this can seem like a long time. There was an important study conducted at the University College in London where 96 people who wanted to create new habits were observed for 12 weeks. The main findings of the study were, it took 66 days on average for new routines to become habits. The real numbers ranged from 18 days to 254 days. During the study, some participants failed to perform their routines every day. This did not prevent them from forming the habit in the long run. What all of this tells you is that it is probably going to take you longer than 21 days to form a new habit or break a bad one. It also tells you that if you miss a day here and there, then it is not the end of the world. So, we recommend that you keep doing your new routines for at least 66 days and longer if you need it. The 3 R's Loop Do you remember in the last video we talked about the 3 R's Loop? The clever people over at MIT discovered that there is a neurological loop that affects the routines that we perform regularly. Just to remind you of the three R's, remind, routine, reward. Why is this a loop? Well, you trigger a habit through a reminder, and this will affect your routine, and in turn, you will feel a sense of reward from this. To look at it another way, remind. This is the trigger that initiates the behavior or action. Routine, this is the action or behavior. Reward. This is the pleasure or fulfillment that you get from the action or behavior. It is really important that you understand and remember the three R's for breaking bad habits and creating new good ones. The reason for this is that you are only going to break a bad habit if you are aware of why you keep doing it. For new habits, you need to understand what will trigger it and what reward you will derive from it. Here's an example of the three R's in action. Remind. Something tells you that it is time for you to drink a beer. This can be the time of day, for example. Routine, this is you drinking the beer. Reward, this is the satisfying feeling that you get from drinking the beer. Time for another beer? If the reward that you get is very pleasurable and you see it as possible, then you are more likely to repeat this process. Once you start drinking beer and enjoying it, in a very short time it can become a habit if you do it often enough. For example, 7 p.m. each day is beer time, so you go to the bar. Breaking bad habits. Okay. So now you know how the three R's work, it is time for you to use the principle to break your bad habits. There are three steps in this process. One, identify the habit. We already covered this in video two. The habit is the routine, so let's use an example here of procrastination. Now that we have established procrastination as the habit you want to break, you have to know what triggers your procrastination, the reminder. Then you need to identify the reward you get from procrastinating. How do you do this? Well, the best way is to ask yourself questions. So to identify the trigger for your procrastination, you can ask yourself, why do I want to procrastinate? Is it because I feel overwhelmed? Does it provide an escape for me? Now move on to the rewards of procrastination. Does it make me feel relaxed? Does it make the stress go away? Does it allow me to do the things that I want to do? These questions are just examples. Ask yourself the questions that are right for you. Once you ask the right questions, you will identify the triggers that remind you to procrastinate and the rewards that reinforce your procrastination habit. Two, consider the rewards. The rewards that you experience from your bad habits will reinforce them. So, procrastinating provides you with a relaxing escape and prevents you from becoming overwhelmed. You do not want to be overwhelmed, so whenever you are faced with a task that you are not sure how to proceed with or is really challenging, then it is likely that your procrastination habit will kick in. Now consider other things that can prevent feeling overwhelmed and provide you with an escape. What if you were to break down a large task into smaller parts so that it doesn't overwhelm you? Or perhaps you can give yourself a reward for finishing the task that relaxes you. These are good alternatives to procrastinating. In this step, you want to play around with the rewards until you find the real thing that is driving your behavior. By examining alternatives to the procrastination habit, 
it will be possible for you to identify what the most important reward is for your procrastination. This reward is making you crave the habit of procrastination. We gave you two alternatives to achieve the rewards. To provide you with the reward of avoiding feeling overwhelmed, you can break up the task. For the reward of escaping, you could choose something else that enables you to escape, such as watching an entertaining video online once you have completed the task. So, think about some alternative routines and write down how you feel about these alternatives. By doing this, you gain a better understanding of your actions and emotions. You can also post these alternatives as possible solutions to break your habit in the future. Remember that it will take time to eradicate your bad habits. Now let's move to step three. Three, identify reminders. Okay, we are not going to pull any punches here. This is the most difficult step. The reason for this is that a number of different triggers surround us. Think about your daily habit of eating your lunch. The action of eating lunch can be triggered by the time of day. For example, 1 p.m. is lunchtime. Or you could find that your stomach starts to rumble and this triggers your lunchtime. What about if you are at work and some of your colleagues tell you that it is lunchtime and they want you to go with them? So, given this, how do you identify reminders? Well, the best way is to identify specific patterns of behavior and actions in relation to a number of different habit categories. These categories are the result of a number of research studies that directly affect the behavior and actions of people. There are five categories. One, time of day. Two, where you are located. Three, your emotional state. Four, other people. Five, the action preceding your urge. You have identified being easily distracted as a bad habit. Take a look at the table below to get a better idea of how this can be triggered. Only one of the categories has a distinctive pattern in this case, and that is your emotional state. So, you can comfortably conclude that when you are bored, you are the most likely to be distracted. Once you have identified your main reminder, you can now take the necessary steps to break your habit. In the next video, we will discuss how to create new good habits with the three R's. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.